Hey, John, are you ready to go? Yeah. Are you ready to go to Death Valley? Mm-hmm. Well, you got shotgun, bud. Hop in. You know, there are those experiences or trips or adventures or journeys, whatever you want to call them, that just somehow seem to transform you and reshape you or even completely change you as a person, like some sort of life-altering epiphany. This adventure wasn't one of those. But I did see some cool stuff. And I did have a great time. Isn't that what adventures are really about? Just the simple joy of doing. There is one consistent thing that I've been relearning on each of these adventures lately, which is destinations don't matter. The journey matters. And this was a great journey. Named after an infamous Confederate warship, the Alabama Hills were given its name by prospectors during the Civil War who were sympathetic to the Confederates. Nestled in the eastern foothills of the Sierra Nevada, the hills sit just a few miles from the small town of Lone Pine, California. Even with its close proximity to civilization, you still have the sense of being in the wilderness. It's truly a unique place with its almost monumental rock formations, and with Mount Whitney as its backdrop. The landscape here is so awe-inspiring that many a Hollywood movie has been filmed here. Nearly every major Western movie actor of the 30s, 40s, and 50s saddled a horse in these here hills. Even modern era Hollywood blockbusters like Gladiator, Iron Man, and Django Unchained were filmed here. It's certainly become a popular place for RVers, van lifers, and overlanders alike. And it's been on my bucket list for some time. If you plan to come here on a busy weekend or during peak camping season, be sure to get here early in the day because you can only camp overnight in designated spots and those are pretty darn scarce. We spent quite a bit of time looking for a campsite, just any available campsite at all and finally found a rather spectacular one. The eight hours of driving wore me out and I didn't film it all when we made camp, but we did get some nice photos playing around with the long exposure mode on our phones after dinner. Good morning guys, just got up, it's like six something, and it is, it's a chilly morning, it's um, I got like two little temperature probe things and I don't know how well you can see this, but it is 33 degrees on the outside, um, temperature's climbing in my tent right now, and just cause I opened the bag it like jumped, it was like 34, 35, it jumped like 5, 6 degrees already just opening sleeping night which is kind of crazy um the cool thing is left to side windows open on the gfc this time there's like a little fan blowing air out i got another little fan down in the corner there i know it's hard to see because the exposure i'm um, just kind of circulating air within the tent and zero condensation so big win right there um, slept pretty comfortably in this uh 15 degree homie bag here I'm gonna get dressed, go downstairs, cook some breakfast. John's already been up for like half an hour, and I'll catch up with you guys down there. Overlanding camping rule number one, coffee first. Rule number two, 
coffee second. <laughs> Reread rule number one. Coffee first. That crow started calling like as soon as you like got out of your car, huh? Yeah, because I walked to the center, because it's like, yeah, it was actually like the center of So here's our campsite this morning. Not shabby. Not too shabby. We rolled in around, oh, I don't know, 3.30 or so, maybe not quite four o'clock. Um, it is a holiday weekend. So there were a lot of people here. We're in Alabama Hills right now, by the way. And it took like an hour to find a camp spot. Just because there are, A, so many people. And I didn't really do very much research beforehand, but apparently you're only supposed to camp in designated spots in this area. We're technically like maybe a mile south of Alabama Hills. Still in BLM land. But it's a pretty awesome spot that John found. We actually found two spots in this area. Um, the other spot had a big wide open area in front and rocks behind. But here we're like completely surrounded. There's like zero breeze whatsoever. There's only two camp spots down in this area too. So that made it nice and private. There's just that one sprinter van down there and us. And man, what a great spot. I will definitely mark this uh, for you guys and then put the GPS coordinates below. Met our neighbors at the van over there. Super cool guy named Charlie. He's actually from Anchorage, Alaska. And he just bought that van like a couple weeks ago, crazy. But once again, amazing camp spot, guys. If you are in the Alabama Hills, Death Valley area, definitely try to stay here one night. Super secluded feeling. And the coordinates are below in the description. See you next time, Alabama Hills. The mountains are calling. Who would have expected that you could go from desert terrain to a snowy mountaintop in less than half an hour? The landscape in the area is just so intriguingly diverse. And we were treated to the beautiful sights of the first snowfall of the season atop Mount Whitney and the Eastern Sierra Nevada range. Standing at 14,505 feet above sea level, Mount Whitney is the tallest mountain in the lower 48 and is one of five 14ers in California if you're into high elevation hikes. P.S. I'm not. I overland so I don't have to hike, lol. It's still fun to ooh and ah at the mountaintops from down below though. There was a decent amount of snow for mid-November at 8,300 feet in Whitney Portal, but we didn't come to this area to see snow. We've seen snow plenty of times in the Sierra Nevada, so back down the mountain we went. Where we found an equally stunning view, looking down into Owens Valley. Next stop. We just left the Alabama Hills area and the town of Lone Pine and we are headed toward a little town called Panamint Springs. Um, there's a road that leads to some other road called Wild Rose Road that's supposed to go into Death Valley. So I don't know if that's a real entrance or not. That's what it looks like on the maps. So we're going to go check that out. Hopefully we don't have to loop all the way around because there are some highway closures 
and some uh, other trail closures there as well. I'll talk more about that later though. I'll check in with you guys when we get to uh, where we're going. So we are descending down into Death Valley right now and almost at the little town of Hanneman Springs, another few miles to there. So we're probably gonna make a stop there just so I can ask some locals to see the best way into Death Valley proper because Highway 190, the normal road in, is closed due to a washed out road from all that record breaking rain back in August. So we'll check in with some locals, see if they have any advice on the best way in. Hopefully we don't have to loop all the way around uh, to the Nevada side because that's gonna add a couple hours of driving. But either way, we're gonna find some adventure. All right, so we just stopped in Panaman Springs. The good folks at the general store right over here said that Wild Rose Road is open into Death Valley. They just went in there yesterday themselves. So we're gonna take that road, get into Death Valley National Park, and go find a campground for the evening. And I'll check in with you guys when we arrive, or maybe I'll shoot some footage if there's anything interesting on the way in. See ya. You tell me if you spot Wiley Coyote or the Roadrunner before I do. This is that Highway 190 I was talking about where part of it's closed off to the left of us here. Tent only. I have a tent. <laughs> I think they I think they kind of mean like no RVs and shit, you know? Okay. So we are gonna camp here at Emigrant Camp. It's not very epic or anything, but we are in a national park and it's designated camping, at least for this area. We're both kind of beat from driving today. We did like four hours of driving. So we're just gonna call it good here. Find something a little more cooler and a little more scenic tomorrow. Maybe out in like Echo Canyon or Hole in the Wall area. But we do have to stop at the Furnace Creek Ranger Station to pick up a permit to do backcountry camping out there. It's gonna be really mild tonight. I think it's only gonna get to like 46 degrees, so uh, much warmer than yesterday, although yesterday was not bad either. We really slowed things down that afternoon and just unwinded. And that evening, I moved some video files from the action cams over to the laptop and then we just relaxed under a wide open sky full of stars. I got woken up by random gusts of wind during the night, but the twinkling stars just seemed to make everything better. Holy moly. Is that dead end or something? Yeah, it's just a dead end up ahead. So we stopped at Furnace Creek already. We got our camping permit for Hole in the Wall tonight. And we're just trying to find a spot to make like a late breakfast. This is some area called uh, Desolation Canyon off of Badwater Basin Road. So we're gonna go in, check that out, see if it's a good spot just to set up real quick, make a super fast breakfast, and then go check out some of the other sites in the area. Desolation Canyon. An extremely apt name not much over here but we're done with breakfast we recaffeinated and we are headed off to the next scenic area so john went to go look for a place to relieve himself a while ago and i have no idea where he oh there he is damn he went far There's the sheer scale of how tall that is right there with John standing down there. It's 
pretty wild that the highest point in the lower 48 is only 58 miles from the lowest point in all of North America, Badwater Basin. Legend has it that a mule once refused to drink from the pool created by a natural spring due to the salinity of the water caused by the ancient salt flat, thus resulting in its name, Badwater Basin. At 282 feet below sea level, it's a rather surreal landscape, a big salt flat area that's tightly hugged by surrounding mountains that are really close by. In fact, nowhere else in the lower 48 can you see such dramatic vertical relief as you can here. But don't let this harsh landscape fool you, because there is animal and plant life in the pool, including the Badwater Snail. And you guessed it, they're only found in Badwater Basin. John had done some Googling about this place before we came, and he expected to see this. And got this instead. But remember, it's about the journey. With Badwater Basin behind us, it was time to head to our campsite. All right, we're headed to Hole in the Wall right now. We have a special VIP permit to go camp at one of the spots tonight. So it's all designated camping here at this spot, Hole in the Wall. And then tomorrow we're gonna try to get a permit for Echo Canyon. For this area, there's only like six designated camp spots and you gotta get your permit like the day of. Um, same for Echo Canyon, but there's nine spots, so we're gonna hit that up early tomorrow in Furnace Creek again, the visitor center, to get that pass and check out that area tomorrow. But for now, hole in the wall. Looks like there are many, many, many holes in the walls. by the actual hole in the wall area. That's camp spot number six, but it was already reserved. Maybe next time. Look how high I have to level my truck to sleep tonight. Cause this is on like a little bit of an incline here. That's a, that's a good like 
six, seven inches tall, that rock right there under my tire. Uh, so it's gonna feel like I'm up on the third floor instead of the second floor tonight, but it is what it is. We'll still get a good night's sleep. Cause it is super duper quiet here. So, you know, I'm totally all for people getting out and enjoying themselves, but come on guys, you're completely blocking the lane here and you're making it really, really difficult for somebody to safely get around you. Like, share the road. If you expect drivers to play nice with you, you gotta play nice with them too. Common sense, people. Seems to be in real short supply these days. Sir, yes, sir. Blue, you're my boy! <laughs>